Ask and seek and knock on the door. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 states, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. It states, Seek and you shall find. So to say, I can't or no, before even seeking means the kind of person who says, I can't, won't be successful no matter what he does. It is when you have an attitude that anything is possible and have that resolve that anything becomes possible. Whatever the Bible demands of us to seek, we must follow what the Bible says to seek out. But does the Bible say to seek out secular blessings, that our business will be blessed? What does it say for us to seek out? And on what door should we knock? Let us examine what it is we should seek out according to the Bible. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 states, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. It states that if we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, that all of these things will be given to us. If we seek out the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, everything else will be given to us accordingly. King Solomon, who had awe-inspiring amounts of wealth and power, still sought wisdom from God. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9-3 through 3 states, So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime, you will have no equal among kings. God said to Solomon, Since you have asked for wisdom, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor. Because King Solomon asked for what he did from God, he received even what he did not ask for. Therefore, we must seek within God's will, and when we seek out God's wisdom is when we will be given what is secular as well. James chapter 1, verse 5-7 through seven states, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. The one who seeks out wisdom is the one who seeks the truth. When we believe that our prayers will be answered by God and seek it out without even a shred of doubt, is when God will answer and give what is sought. James chapter 1 verse 8 states, Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Someone who is suspicious is someone who is double-minded and he will be able to seek out nothing. It says to ask and you shall find and seek and you shall find. But what should we seek out? Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 states, Ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13 states, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. We should seek out God. Even when it is difficult, it's hard, when we are happy or sad, we should ask of God and seek Him out. We should seek Him sincerely. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 states, Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call on Him while He is near. It states to seek out the Lord and call on Him while He is near. But when is while He is near? It is when the Lord calls on us. Time of worship is when God calls on us. And that is when we must seek out God. When God calls on us, it is to bless us. At the end of the day, what must God's people seek out? Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 1 states, Go up and down the streets of Jerusalem. Look around and consider. Search through her squares. If you can find but one person who deals honestly and seeks the truth, I will forgive this city. God said if one person who deals honestly and seeks the truth was found, you would forgive this city. If one who seeks the truth is found, God will permit all. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 13 through 15 states, I also saw under the sun this example of wisdom that greatly impressed me. There was once a small city with only a few people in it, and a powerful king came against it, surrounded it, and built huge siege works against it. Now there lived in that city a man, poor but wise, and he saved the city by his wisdom. But nobody remembered that poor man. 
Those who were surrounding the city left due to the words of this poor but wise man. If not for this poor but wise man, that city would have fallen. It states he saved the city by his wisdom and yet nobody remembered that poor man. However, even if we are poor and nobody acknowledges us when we work for wisdom and righteousness, God will remember us. God will be the one who remembers and then it won't matter that the world does not remember. It says that the end of time will be like the time of Noah. Who should we seek out? We must find a prophet like Noah. Who should we seek at a time like Sodom and Gomorrah, a time of judgment? We must find a prophet like Lot to be saved. Likewise, we must find someone like that. It says knock on the door. Then what door should we knock on? Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 through 14 states, Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it. The truth isn't at a place where many people congregate. And even if there are only a few people, if there is truth found there, then it is the true narrow gate. However, today, the place where the truth is found, the true narrow gate, is difficult to find. However, even though it is a small gate when we enter through it, we will find that a big, broad road opens up before us. We must knock on a door and it must be the right door. God wants us to knock on the door of His Word. Only then will it open for us. Revelations chapter 3 verse 20 states, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. It says that Jesus is at the door knocking. The door He is knocking at is the door of our hearts. That is why when we pray, we must pray to open the doors of our hearts and to open the doors of wisdom and to knock in this way. Only when we become those who knock on their own hearts to know themselves, will the Lord open up the large door to us and say, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Only then will those words be fulfilled. We must knock on the door of truth. If God allows it, everything will easily come together. But if we oppose the will of the heavens, even a road that was open to us will close. We must seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and seek God and His truth. We must also knock on the door of truth and knock on the doors of our own hearts and open our hearts widely to receive the truth. Only then will the gate to heaven be open, the gate to health be open, and the gate to success and prosperity open, and everything will be opened. We hope you can become those for whom everything is opened and everything in harmony in Jesus' name.